Hello and welcome back to linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for your next Linux job. And if you're preparing for Red Hat Certified System Administrator, we also help you prepare for that. Uh, my own name is Sean Me Joseph and I'll be preparing you today. My email is showpopulous at gmail.com. Feel free to send me questions and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Let's go to today's tutorial. Today we'll go to our website linuxjobber.com and we'll be looking at module number 15. Module number 15 here, which is networking for administrators. And here are the tutorial videos if you want to um, learn something from them. Today we'll be looking at practice questions. So we have done number 27 in previous videos, and today we are going to be working on number 8. Number 8 actually has a number of questions, so we'll have to take them one by one. We can't I can't read and understand everything at one shot, so I have to look at all these questions. I have to read each one and answer each one as they come. So now um, the question is asking us to use the template here to answer the following questions. I don't have a template yet so I'm going to make up a template and I'll start answering the questions. So let me make up a template very quickly and get started. So I'm going to go to I'm going to put my own template in slash temp. You know what why don't I do it here? and vi slash temp um, example um, tutorial template so I'm just using my own template because I don't have a template yet so let's read the first question it says the first question it says how many machines well devices with hardware addresses are currently connected to the system so now let's go and solve that question. That is one of the, um, I guess, easy questions that you can easily get um, a nice point on the exam just by knowing that. So the tool you will use for that is called Nmap, which does a port scan on all of the machines on your network. So actually, if any device is connected to your network and it's got a hardware address or probably um, an IP address it will show up on Nmap. So the way you use Nmap is to do a uh, port scan SP and you scan all of your network. You scan every machine on the network. So if you need to learn about subnet you do that in a different video but basically when you do slash 24 here is basically scanning every thing inside 192.168.0 so which means that it was scanned from 0 even though I put 1 here it doesn't start from 1 it starts from 0 and it runs all the way to 254 and it returns everything in that every every device connected in that range so you can see it's returning in here and there's a this is the uh, this is my router here 192.168.0.1 and here is its MAC address and yeah, this is another machine here this is another one this is another one this is another one so let's count them to answer the question so here's um, host 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so if we do a VI why don't I open this up in a different window so I don't have to go back and forth. So if we do so, VI TMP, um, where is the, what we have, example templates, template example. tutorial template so if we do that um, if we put number no, if we put number of machines number of machines 
10. We'll go to the next question. So as you can see, there are simple questions. It's just that there are a number of them and it will take some time, but they are very simple questions. So it says to scan all ports on the server and list any three listening services. So let's go and scan ports on this machine here. So if we want to scan ports, what do we use? We use netstat and then we do a slash n um let's do n first and i'll show you what the answer is now if you do i just want to show you here if you don't put any pipe in there and you don't you don't um you don't scroll carefully it'll run through a lot of things and you won't be able to get your results then you have to scroll up and start looking for them kind of quietly so what you want to do is that you want to pipe this through more and then this will give you the so you have the listening ports there so if you do what you want to do is that you want to put a an L and as you can see this shows you more but then what happens with the NL option is that it tells you the port numbers but it, it doesn't give you the service so you have to know which service is using this port so we know 22 we know this is SSH we know 25 is mail which is SMTP and so on and so forth so if you don't know how to translate them if you don't remember what you can do is that you can simply then use the L command and then you can see this is a SSH and this is a SMTP which is the mail service and this is running on local host so that they're not using our machines for um, sending sp spam mails so all of this is is this is your this is what you need so now the question says to list three services that are running so now we know the SSH service is running we know the SMTP service is running and how do we know they're actually running if you go here and you expand this you can see this is LIST which means it is listening that's all that that's what that means it is listening so now let me get go back in here and see if we have any more services that we can recognize well I can't recognize any other one that I know well that I know of so I'm gonna list the two that I can that I that I can recognize so let me re list the two here listening services SSH and um, SMTP so now let's go to so let's put this in here this is a this is B so let's go to C now let's do this it says to scan all ports on the server and list any listening three services we did that list the first three routers on any path between your machine and google.com so to get that one done you have to use a tool called um, traceroute so if you do traceroute let me clear the screen first so you see clearly so if you do traceroute between your machine and google.com see this is all a packet what happens is that a packet is sent from your machine to google.com and this is the path that the traffic follows before it gets to google.com which is this IP address here and this is your this is the starting point here it's trying to get to this IP address here and it made 30 hops to get there so 
we sent 40 bytes of packets down there and the first IP address the first router it hits is my router the one that sends it out of my house to my um, service provider which is this is my IP address here now this is the first router at my IP my ISP my service provider this is the name of their router and this is its IP address and that's what the question is asking us to list and this is the second one so I'm in how I'm in Maryland in Howard County and here is the next router on the Comcast network I'm using Comcast as my service provider and here is the next one here the next router it hits and then it jumps from there all the way to New York and it goes to Virginia and it keeps on going like that until it gets to the Google router so now the question says to to list the first three routers so either name IP address is good enough so I'm gonna start with the first one which is I'm gonna copy this and here I'm going to list it and then I'm going to do the next one and I'm going to list it and I'm going to do the final one and I'm going to list it so that answers that question and we're done with that so now we'll go to the next question as you can see they're not very difficult questions this is just uh, a number of questions so how many a records does the does google.com have if you do a dig on google.com you see all the a records that google.com has so first i'm going to clear my screen and i'm going to dig google.com and it has this many a records 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so I'm going to answer the question Google A records 11 so I'll go to the next one and uh, let's see what the question says it says to list the IP address of the first three authoritative servers for google.com <clears throat> what we know is that Google used to list their authoritative servers now they don't do it anymore so we have to use a different trick to get as close as possible to our answer and what you can do is that you do the same dig at google.com but now you use say list name servers name servers are actually the authoritative servers so um, we can go into a different tutorial on that one there I don't think that it makes sense to um, divert our attention into that right now but I'll do a dig google.com just so you can see what shows up so what shows up here is google.com here and this is the name server and NS stands for name server and these are the name servers here and it gives you an additional section which <clears throat> what that does is that it basically gives you the IP addresses of the name servers as you can see there are different IP addresses if you look at the third octet so what happens here is that there's a big difference between this one here and the first dig that we did if you notice what's happening here this just gives us an answer section which means that every time you type in google.com into your browser you're asking for this domain name google.com any one of these machines can respond now the name of this machine just like my machine has local host uh, local host is the name of my machine right here or I have another machine called mini Dell these machines actually have their own <coughs> their own names which is not google.com google.com is simply a domain name now understand that difference clearly 
this is domain name this one is doing um, this one is doing host name to IP this thing has host names so now that's what happens here if we go to the next section this now here's where it is important if you look at the, the next one this here is a host name it's a machine name this here is a host name it's a machine name so it's ns2.google.com so inside this domain google.com there's a machine called ns2 and this here is the IP address of that machine that machine is a name server and this is the A record of it so now when you do a forward and reverse lookup doing using dig or NS lookup a lot of people get confused putting in domain name and thinking that the look the reverse lookup should actually bring up a an IP address and if you put in an IP address the reverse lookup should bring in the domain name reverse lookups don't bring up domain name reverse lookups bring out the host names so that's the forward and reverse lookup that they're talking about not host name translate not domain name translation understand that that is very very important so it says to list um, the first three authoritative servers and their ns1 ns2 and ns3.google.com so let's put that in to our answers so it's NS1, NS2, and NS3.google.com. And you can expand this other two um, later on. I just don't want to spend time on that right now because of the video. So now let's do the last question, the F. And let's see what the question says. It says to do a reverse lookup for one of the IP addresses and the listed associated domain name. Now that's where it's very important to understand that domain name doesn't necessarily mean host name. So now if we want to do a reverse lookup for one of the associated, let's see, do a reverse lookup for one of the IP addresses and list the associated domain name. So we can do a re reverse lookup. Two ways we can do reverse lookup. So we can do a dig. We can dig this. We can dig um, ns dot ns name servers at google.com and that gives us this. So this is this is called the forward lookup. We, we put in the domain name, it give, we put in this name here, it gives us the IP address, it's called forward lookup. So if we do a dig on, this is called the forward lookup. You dig this, it gives you the IP address. So the question section says, give me the information on ns3.google.com. We get the answer section which says ns3.google.com here's its IP address now we do a reverse lookup which is dig dash X which means reverse of this IP address and that tells us the answer section that it's ns3.google.com now if we choose to not do it that way we can also use NS lookup for that same IP address NS lookup will help us do reverse lookup even forward lookup actually so so we're doing a reverse lookup on this and it tells us the name is ns3.google.com now this is the host name of the machine not the domain name so now to answer that question which says to do a reverse lookup and list the associated domain name. The associated domain name is actually ns3.google.com. Google.com is the domain name. So to answer that question, we're going to put we're 
we're going to put ns3. google.com and the domain name is actually google.com that's the entire domain that answers our question for question number 28 that uh, that ends the question thank you very much for watching this video my own name is Sean me Joseph here at linuxjabba.com my email is showpopulous at gmail.com so if you have any questions please for please forward it to me and I'll be sure to answer your questions for you thank you very much for watching